the ruling establishment has a lot of, they, they will stop at nothing to f- complete their toolkit of control. Right? So one of the things that has been missing from the toolkit of total control has been quarantines and curfews. Right. Mm-hmm. So now, welcome to the new world in America where to get on a bus, to go through a subway station, if you think that the p- procedures at the TSA are onerous, right? Guess this is coming to a bus depot near you. It's a more invasive way and the ruling class needs this because, let me say, if the ruling class ever saw wide-scale civil unrest, you'd see an Ebola outbreak in America right away. Okay, so this is, what you see is that Ebola is... Another tool in the toolbox of the ruling class repression to control. Yeah, to, of, to keep down Absolutely, repression. positively, 100%. This is a tool. Right. Yeah, Ebola doesn't just magically start spreading. Mm-hmm. And then we have these doctors that come back here. The white people, of course, live. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the two whites who got it. Or survived. Mm-hmm. All the black people that get it die. Uh, right? It's very possible that uh, these uh, NG one of one of these NGOs over there is going around uh, with a veil of uh, Ebola or spreading it from a small plane onto villages. The point is, is to get hundreds of thousands of people infected with it and uh, create uh, the next phase of control. Now, one of the things I'd like to show to back up my uh, uh, my claims here. Uh, here's a document from the uh, Rockefeller Foundation. Rockefeller Foundation, right there. Oh, you can oh, zoom in on that, where my finger is. It's called Scenarios for, for the Future International Development, the Rockefeller Foundation. All right. Okay, let's take a look at what they're saying here. This is uh, something like a 50, 60 page document. I'd like to, you to go to uh, page 18, if you can look at this up on the internet, but I'll read it off to you. It's called lockstep, lockstep. And this is a, a phrase that I used uh, right after 2001 when I saw the entire system of the United States, including the population, were in lockstep. Uh, so the Congress went along, and yes, it was Osama bin Laden, and the people waved their flag and said, I hate, 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 and everything was in lockstep. Well, in 2010, uh, they published this, Rockefeller Foundation, and here's what they're saying. They're saying that, uh, it's, they call it a scenario. These are scenario narratives, and they speak about it in the past tense. So they put out this scenario, lockstep. A world of tighter, top-down government control and more authoritarian leadership with limited innovation and growing citizen pushback. Okay, I'll read a, a little bit of it. In 2012, the pandemic that the world had been anticipating for years, nobody was anticipating a pandemic, finally hit. Unlike 2009's N1H, uh, H1N1, uh, this new influenza strain uh, originating from wild geese, they use wild, they use some scenario, but this is Ebola they're yeah, talking yeah, about. Ahead. Even the most pandemic prepared nations were quickly overwhelmed when the virus streaked around the world, infecting nearly 20% of the global population and killing 8 million in just seven months, the majority of them healthy young adults. The pandemic also had a deadly effect on economic economies you, you can see the you can see the agenda just naked raw naked control agenda written down and it's anybody's guess how this becomes effectuated in real life so whether this is written specifically as marching orders or whether people take it upon themselves in the intelligence networks to say okay well this has been produced so this is the plan here but these narratives have to be written in advance because the intelligence agencies don't know how to do this these narratives they need help so the, these think tanks they come up with these like Rand Corporation Rockefeller Foundation these are think tanks of death they're not the think tanks they're not there to find great ways to help people okay the pandemic also had a deadly effect on economics international mobility of both people and goods screeched to a halt which is what they want they want a completely isolated world right debilitating industries like tourism and breaking global supply chains well of course they want tourism stopped because they don't they're not in the tourism business and they want you at home in your house in front of the TV then they got you because once you watch the TV they they own your soul even locally wait a second we're on television I mean commercial television let's say uh, national yeah. even locally a normally bustling 
banking shops and offices sat empty for months. Okay, so th I love how they talk about it in the past tense in 2010. Right? The pandemic blanketed the planet, though disproportionate numbers in Africa died. <laughs> Southeast Asia and Central America, where the virus spread like wildfire. It sounds like the opening uh, monologue of a disaster movie, right? Exactly. Now listen, to, here's the good stuff now. But even in developed countries, containment was a challenge. Now here's this one. I love this one. The United States' initial policy of strongly discouraging, in quotation marks, strongly discouraging citizens from flying proved deadly in its leniency. So they're saying, oh, so they're saying that... Th no, keep going. Okay. Read it. Just proved read it. deadly in its leniency. Leniency. So they should have been tougher, right? Accelerating the spread of the virus, not just within the United States, but across borders. However, a few countries did fare better. China, in particular. The Chinese government's quick imposition and enforcement of mandatory quarantine for all citizens, as well as its instant and near hermetic sealing off of all borders, saved millions of lives, stopping the spread of virus far earlier than in other countries. So the message is here is we have to look towards the Chinese, the oppressive totalitarian, totalitarian. Yeah, Chinese regime as an example of what we, we need to be doing here. And of course, the ruling class here loves the Chinese. Chinese regime because they have the, they have demonstrated to the ruling class the most efficient form of author capitalism, which is, which is authoritarian capitalism. So we have capitalism, but unfortunately we have this like veil. I get it. We have this, this veil this of democracy. It's, this is yeah. very interesting. This is continue on. Please. Okay, uh, okay. China's government was not the only one that took extreme measures to protect its citizens from risk and exposure. During the pandemic, national leaders around the world flexed their muscles, flexed their authority, and imposed airtight rules and restrictions. You can see the agenda. Okay, no, go, go, go. okay. From the mandatory wearing of face masks to body temperature checks at the entries to communal spaces like uh, That's what's happening right trained, now. Yeah, but soon it's going to be like body, you know. I, it's It'll be at the subway? Yeah. They, they, well, Is that what you're saying? We'll be going through this in the oh, subway to get on the buses absolutely, and the subway? Po absolutely. Things positively. like that. And, and what, what this means, though, is, you know, don't, don't think about having a, you know, a cigarette, a joint on you, or, you know, I mean, basically, you can't. This is a, a dragnet for everything. So, if if in order for you, oh, in other words, just like with stop and frisk, this is ultimate stop and frisk. Uh, this is uh, the this ultimate is cavity stop and frisk, cavity search kind of thing. All right. So during the pandemic, national leaders around there flex their authority. You know, they're 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 they're, they're, they're uh, now there's some good stuff. Listen to this. Uh, and even supermarkets, they want uh, body checks at supermarkets. Okay. So basically, what they're saying is they're building a system where Every move you make, you can't you've got to go through them. You okay. can't get food. Can't well, how get about food. if you go to the farmer's market? Right. <laughs> Here's the good stuff now. I mean, it just keeps getting better. Even after the pandemic faded, this more authoritarian control and oversight of citizens and their activities stuck and even intensified. That's the whole point. So they're going to get rid of... Didn't that happen already with 9-11? Uh, of course. 9-11 okay. was how many, 14 years sure. ago, and sure. we still have all these uh, draconian rules. So they're going to put the body cavity USA, searches Patriot, in. USA, Patriot, and That's all right. that. That's right. So in order to get to a supermarket, you got to have a body cavity search, and then when there's no more evil, evil uh, well, you know what? We kind of like this way because we have a in complete infrastructure of uh, a, mm. a control grid. Like, in order pr to protect themselves from the spread of increasingly global problems, from pandemics <coughs> and national terrorism, to environmental crisis and rising poverty, leaders around the world took a firmer grip on power. Well, what the hell would rising poverty have anything to do with imposing strict uh, c citizen controls with face masks? Eh? So they're very sloppy stuff here. Uh, at first, the notion of a more controlled world gained wide acceptance and approval. <laughs> I'm sorry. Nobody likes this stuff. Can, They're just saying on. it. Sit no, on. I have, to, I have, yeah, to, I have yeah. to provide we analysis. Have, we, only because we only have five minutes left, so that's Oh, my why. God. Okay. Citizens willingly gave up some of their sovereignty and their privacy to more paternalistic states in exchange for greater safety and stability. I mean, that's just a, a, that's just a complete naked contradiction to the famous saying that if you think you're going to give up a little bit of uh, security, I mean, if, you want, if you're going to give up your freedom for security, you're going to get neither. That's the long standing thing. And here what they're doing is 
they're not even ashamed or embarrassed to absolutely say the exact opposite. They're saying, yes, we all want to give up our, our privacy and sovereignty for more stability and security and stability. So you don't get that. When you give it up like that, you get the shaft. That Can you show us the, t the cover again of I'll what you were just reading? One more just time, and then I have this two is more documents. Right, two this more is what documents. we were reading here, and just zoom in a little bit so folks can see it. He'll zoom in. Don't worry. You can relax. Right. And scenarios for the future of technology and international development. Okay. The now, I have two more documents. Keep it zoomed. We have the National Security Memorandum of December 10th, 1974. This is Henry Hold Kissinger's brainchild. The National Security Memorandum number. 200. You can look that up on your internet. Internet. I'll summarize it. He says that there's too many people. We got to get rid of the population. So if, to answer your question, oh, from earlier. Yeah, yeah. He says he used the word depopulation, which is different. <laughs> depopulation means killing people that already exist, and it's to get the minerals because we need the minerals. And here's another one. The CDC has a patent on Ebola. They patented it. Yeah. Right. So basically, if you want to get a cure for your Ebola. Uh, you here it says go it right up here, right? It says human Ebola virus species and compositions and methods thereof, and it's a patent. It's a patent. Uh, they uh, patented the main strain plus something like 17 other strains of it. So they own it now, and I don't know how exactly you can own that, but apparently they've, they've done the same thing. Yeah, I didn't think you could own a natural... Yeah, you can. Uh, I guess the main thing to, 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 to finish off this show is this, that... Um, uh, that um, they want to get more control, more curf and it's and it's going to be curfews and quarantine. So what I'm saying is that unless the American people start to get some new um, way to uh, revolt, to, uh, a new way to organize, new way to protest, new uh, in, unless they, we can break through the uh, ap apathy, because that's what we have here, mm -hmm. uh, then it's going to be a slave state here. The ruling class doesn't seem to have too much resistance. They're getting everything on their Christmas. Uh, shopping list, and they've been wanting quarantines and curfews for a long time. Now they got it, and and if you want to live in a world where you're tricked into all this stuff because it's for your safety, right? And if you want to have a probe and make sure you got to check your pockets, make sure you don't have anything incriminating on you before you go out, and and when you step out of your house, you want some police there to monitor and see what you're doing. If that's the world you want to live in, be apathetic. Don't do anything. You're going to get that world very soon. It's coming your way, definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Same. what should people do? What's the hope? You have 30 seconds. To wake up, learn about it, and go fight these bastards in Washington. They're easy to beat. If we can just organize, we can beat them. It's simple. They're weak, and there's so few of them.